Five Steps to Successful TikTok SEO with Mathilde Hoy. The In Search SEO podcast is brought to you by SimilarWeb, helping you build better SEO strategies with digital intelligence, insights, and data. Hey, it's David. Is TikTok a good SEO opportunity? And if so, what do you have to do to take advantage of it? That's what we're discussing today with a lady who used to be a full-blown TikTok critic. Since then, she's come full circle and now strongly advocates TikTok as a valuable SEO opportunity. She's an SEO manager at Transact in Denmark. A warm welcome to the In Search SEO podcast, Mathilde Hoy. Thank you. Hey Mathilde, thanks so much for joining us. Well, you can find Mathilde over at omctransact.dk. So Mathilde, why TikTok SEO? TikTok is a fairly new platform, but it's a very powerful platform, especially for Gen Z users. Google themselves have already said last year, I think it was, that they're losing Gen Z searches to TikTok. So it's a very powerful platform that you can't overlook when doing your SEO. Okay, so Gen Z, relatively young, is that the only age bracket that you you should be targeting? And uh, I guess if your products, your services aren't directly aimed at that market, is it necessary to be on TikTok? Yes, definitely. And it's actually the first step in uh, in how to do successful uh, TikTok SEO. You need, of course, to do some audience research. You need to know if your users are actively using the platform. But even though I'm saying that Gen Z is the most common user on TikTok, we do see millennials and boomers joining each day. I will dare to say that you can sell anything or brand anything on the platform because the the user base is so big and it's growing each day. Uh, TikTok has over a billion users worldwide. And that's excluding China. Uh, They have their own pendant uh, to TikTok called Douyin. So being on TikTok is something you can't ignore because you can't sell anything on the platform or brand anything on the platform uh, or brand yourself on the platform as a manufacturer or a a reseller of some products. You just have to find the, the correct way to do it and do it TikTok natively instead of a copying all of the other ways from all of the other platforms. Okay, okay. And so there are different audiences on there. Um, There are older audiences on there. And certainly when Facebook started off, Facebook were obviously just students to to begin with. But um, that audience, I guess, skews towards a slightly older demographic now. So there's a chance that the same could happen with TikTok. Yeah, we do see on social media platforms that it is the young audiences that adapt to the platform first, and then the older ones come slowly and adapt to the platform as well. And it is the same that we're seeing here. All of Gen Z, which is my generation, uh, I'm born in 97, so I'm the oldest in my generation. Uh, we are using TikTok as, a, yeah, it's just a part of everyday life, uh, where Facebook in my generation is not use that much anymore that is for our parents mostly (laughs) okay so um it might take a while for me to get onto tiktok is that what you're saying Mm, depend on uh, on how uh, adaptive you are (laughs) the algorithm is a powerful one oh i I like to think fairly adaptive (laughs) so anyway today you're sharing five steps to successful tiktok seo and you mentioned audience research as your first point Uh, how how do you actually do that audience research and determine if your audience is on there Uh, i would like to think it as a part you've already done in all of your other marketing efforts Uh, as an seo we not we don't normally do that type of research i don't uh, at least but it is something that you as a company selling a specific product will have to do yourself and see when you are deciding what your overall marketing strategy is, which platforms are your your audience using? Is it on TV that you need to target them? Is it on social media platforms? And of course, which ones? Is it through radio? Is it through local marketing or a national marketing strategy? So it's not it's not SEO specific, but more marketing specific and choosing the correct channels to to push your uh, your messaging. Yeah, your marketing through. 
Yeah, yeah. So, so, so initially, obviously, you're talking about um, doing the audience research based upon who you want to target, based upon your website visitors, and 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 who you want to target as a business. But um, is there audience research that you can do natively on TikTok to establish to see if that sort of audience is also on TikTok? The m- best thing you can do is to u- just use the platform and see what what rabbit holes or subcultures that you will run into on the platform when you use it. It's also the best way to find trends that you can tap into in your SEO strategy on TikTok. Just keep using the platform and see what you're exposed to. That's the best way to also know what types of audiences or users are already using the platform. Okay, okay. And step number two is keyword research. Yes. Uh, we obviously need to target some specific research. It is SEO that we are doing. The way I would approach this is I would first go about doing a normal keyword analysis or keyword research for made within Google tools. So if I have a brand or product that sells uh, hair care, I would uh, do the research on Google's tools first uh, and see what, what keywords are trending, what keywords have search volume that we can target. And then select the most important ones from that research and apply onto TikTok and search internally on TikTok for hair, for example, to see what talks are trending or what videos are trending, what is working well. I don't know of any specific tools that get search volume or reach data from TikTok, unfortunately. TikTok has a keyword insights tool that you can use, but it's very ads focused so it's more like uh, which ctas are working in the in-feed ads and stuff like that it's not that seo relevant in my opinion okay and step number three optimization of profile on videos yes you have your keywords you need to use them if you are selling hair care products then make sure you mention that in your description on, on your profile or maybe in your name as well And when you make TikTok videos, also include those keywords in the videos, in the on-screen text. If you're doing text posts, they also need to be included. And if you're doing a voiceover, then you also need to say the the words out loud because TikTok will be listening and, and sound is the most important feature on TikTok videos. So always say those keywords out loud. TikTok will be listening. That sounds a bit scary. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's take us up to number f- step number four, which is embedding of videos on web and using them on other platforms. Yes. If you have a website where you're doing articles or blog posts and you're talking about the same subjects that you're also talking about in your TikTok videos, make sure to embed those videos on that web page to show the synergies between what you're talking about on social media, but also what you're talking about on your website. But only if it makes sense for you to do so. It's not all websites, for example, business to business, they are more professional. And it's not necessarily that it makes sense to have your TikTok videos embedded on that. So that's only if it makes sense for you to do so. The other part is using the TikTok videos on the other social media platforms, but not the other way around. We want TikTok native content on TikTok only. But we can push it to Instagram, for example. We do see that in Reels already and in YouTube Shorts, uh, TikTok videos being flushed out into those channels. But we won't. We we do not like getting the same content from those channels into TikTok. So it's a one-way street from TikTok and out, not the other way around. So why? What What makes content different on TikTok? The users on TikTok loves the uniqueness of the platform. They love the uniqueness of the content and that it's tailored to what they want to see specifically. And when we take a a video that had its life on Instagram or Facebook and put that into TikTok, the users will see that immediately and see that it's not native to the platform. This also goes when doing ads on TikTok. These perform best if they are native to TikTok and not some big creative that's uh, been cut down from a TV commercial, for example. It just performs better when it's native to the platform because it's it has the feel of a normal everyday TikTok video. And that's the important part. I'd like to understand a little bit more about you know, really what makes it native. I mean, are you talking about videos that are, I mean, obviously you're talking about what, 16 by 9 
vertical videos? Are you talking about videos that are just made using a mobile phone? Videos with maybe text created within the TikTok app on top of the videos? Is, is that what makes it a native video or is there, uh, are there additional elements? It is mostly what makes make it native. It's the most of the TikTok videos on TikTok uh, from the average user is very everyday, low key, low budget productions. It's just, for example, me filming that I'm doing this and then posting it and telling my followers about it. The look and feel is very uh, like the person's video you are seeing is talking directly to you as a user. So you wouldn't you you wouldn't take a segment of this recording at all. That would be bad practice. So you you would you would you you would record beforehand to say, yeah, I'm just about to do this. We're going to talk about this. You know, come and you know watch the final episode or let you know when it goes live. Is that the kind of thing you're talking about? Yes, exactly. I would never post a pre-edited video that was not specifically made for TikTok. Got you. Okay, and embedding videos that you're talking about i mean why would you want to embed a vertical amateurish video on a website um instead of a horizontal better produced video it is to show your users that you don't feel ashamed of the platform because tiktok is while it's a young platform many often have a negative association with it because of all of the discussions going on around data protection and privacy and child protection and and stuff like that. So it is to show that you're owning the platform, but you're also using it very specifically for a specific uh, tone of voice. Uh, so you want to show those synergies towards the users and could lead them into your website that way around. Okay. So it's a good be- behind the scenes platform, behind the scenes yeah. that, that isn't available anywhere else. Understood. And point number five, find your way to do it. TikTok is not a one way fits all. No. Like I said earlier, the TikTok users love the uniqueness of the platform. They love when brands, brands are being unique on the platform and doing TikTok their own way. So of course, if you have to start doing TikTok videos, you also have to find your own way to do it. And I normally talk about two approaches that you can choose for this. Uh, the one is uh, the persona approach, which is um, my, my most frequent example of this is uh, Duolingo, the translation app where you can learn a new language. They have this green owl as a mascot that they use in all of their videos. And this mascot will also go onto other companies' uh, comment sections and begin to roast them its entire personality shown on their uh, TikTok profile and it will attend movie premieres like the Barbie premiere, uh, the Barbie movie premiere, where it goes dressed in all pink and, you know, it has its own life. It's it's the face of the company. It's the way uh, that Duolingo chose to approach this. And the, the users loves it. It's, uh, it's very popular. And then the other approach that you can choose, if you're not comfortable with having a mascot or the same person doing all of your videos, then you can choose the subculture approach, uh, which is something that Dyson uh, in Germany is uh, doing, or Dyson in general, but the, the example I keep with me is from Germany, where the type of videos that they post are very show all of your products, uh, sh- let me show you how I curl my hair or vacuum my uh, my apartment floor and stuff like that, showing off the products and how they're used in everyday life and then accompanying uh, the description with relevant hashtags like a uh, hair talk or cleaning talk or clean talk, uh, which is a massive hashtag on, uh, on TikTok. And then Another thing they're doing and what makes Dyson Germany interesting is in all of their videos, they're both using German language and English language. On the same channel? In the same video. So uh, in the video uh, specifically, it's German, but in the description, it's English. So the video is targeting both the local German audience, but also the global audience. Because when you do a TikTok video, it's not it's not only going to be shown in Germany, for example, or in Denmark, in my case. It's going to be shown to the world. So you also have to optimize for that. How often should you publish on TikTok? Quite frequent, actually. I would say at least once a week, preferably every day. Okay. And are you able to say 
black and white, certain industries wouldn't find TikTok successful? I mean, for instance, B2B. Yeah, B2B would have it more difficult on the platform because users are going to the platform to, you know, relax, just have a good time, um, where B2B messaging are often very hot and cold. And TikTok is a very warm platform. You feel welcome when you are getting all of your videos on your For You page that you know is specifically chosen for you. So yeah, B2B would have a, a little bit harder time, but Again, it depends on how they do TikTok. You could also do TikTok as a B2B, but as a more of a way of showing how your corporate culture is. We at Transact do TikTok as well. We have a profile, but we are more about showing uh, how our culture is here at the, at the our workplace, at our office, and showing, you know, everyday office life, like uh, when you return from holiday and your e- email inbox is full of emails and you're just, oh, I'm... You know, overwhelmed, overwhelmed, but yeah, because of all of the emails and making fun of that. So situations that that users also can see themselves in in their everyday life. So not not specifically related to how to do SEO or offer SEO services, but just how we like to run things here. Let's finish off with the Pareto Pickle. So Pareto says that you can get 80% of your results from 20% of your efforts. What's one SEO activity you would recommend that provides incredible results for modest levels of effort? This is not TikTok related at all, but uh, it's actually one of my co-workers last year that, uh, that came up with this amazing idea. If you have a very important uh, web page or landing page that you want to give a good placement but can't have in the main navigation on your website then putting that link into the footer instead securing all of those many in links from all of these pages is a really valuable position and it has a great effect on that uh, that page without having to put it up in the main navigation so that's definitely my uh, my tip I've been your host, David Bain. You can find Mathilde Hoy over at omctransact.dk. Mathilde, thanks so much for being on the In Search SEO podcast. Thank you for letting me. And thank you for listening. Check out all the previous episodes and sign up for a free trial of the Similar Web platform over at similarweb.com. Hey.